I'm going to give you a little story. Um, I'm on Obamacare. My husband was on Obamacare with me. And we were told that we were enrolled in Obamacare. And then when we filed claims, we were told we were not enrolled in Obamacare. And then we got it straightened out, and he filed claims, and we were told once again that we were not on Obamacare. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Gimme Five. That, of course, uh, Congresswoman Cynthia uh, Loomis, uh, who was with us uh, earlier in the show. I wanted to give you uh, uh, an expanded version of, of what she said yesterday. It was heart-wrenching. Uh, it was tear-jerking. Of course, it was true. It was uh, sincere. It was heartfelt on her part. And um, this, is, this is the story of millions of Americans all over this wonderful country of ours. And it's only going to get worse, only going to get worse when we're all forced off of our plans and forced onto Obamacare. We're all going to be victimized by this. Right now you think, yeah, I still have my doctor, I still have my insurance to my employer, you know, my hospital, I know where it is, I could go to it. That's all going to change. Your deductibles, whew, through the roof. It's all going to change. Now this congresswoman and her husband have already been victims, and here's more. Well, come to find out, my husband was having chest pains at the time that he was told we were not enrolled in Obamacare, and come to find out, he didn't have all of the tests that he was advised by his physician to have. So, on October 24th, the week before election, my husband went to sleep and never woke up. He had a massive heart attack in his sleep at age 65, a perfectly, by all appearances, healthy man. Come to find out, in a conversation with his physician after he died, he chose not to have one of the tests, the last test, his doctor told him to have. This happened to coincide with the time that we were told that we were not covered by Obamacare. All right. Now, of course, she th she's talking to John Gruber at that hearing yesterday, okay? Uh, you know, you could, so, so of course, you, you could say, well, then he was to blame for, his, you know, he should have had the test, and whether he should have had the test or not is debatable. But the reason he didn't have the test, according to his wife, was he wasn't covered. He had no insurance. So he already took get test A, test B, test C, and didn't think he had, you know, it was, it was adding up. Because this whole thing is a farce. Here's more. I'm not telling you that my husband died because of Obamacare. He died because he had a massive heart attack in his sleep. But I am telling you that during the course of time that he was having tests by a physician and was told we were not covered by Obamacare, that he then decided not to have the last test the doctor asked him to have. Yep. Yep. Welcome to Obamacare. You think you have the insurance, you don't have the insurance. You keep your doctor, like your doctor, keep your insurance, ha, <laughs> that's not even a question anymore. Deductibles, you won't be able to afford them. Premiums still rising. Uh, doctors leaving the practice. GPs, you won't see a GP in the future. You'll call on the phone or be on a computer or have a group session or see a nurse. Here's one final one. Let me suggest that there may be a decline in participation and that it may not be to the benefit of the American people. I want to suggest that regardless of what happened to me personally, that there have been so many glitches in the passage and implementation of Obamacare that have real life consequences on people's lives. And the, the so-called glibness that has been referenced today have direct consequences for real American people. So get over your damn glibness. All right. I don't know what else there is to say. Uh, but you think this shakes them? You think they care? You think that they, this means anything to the Obamacare sycophants? Absolutely not. Your Newsmax Now update is next.